Hilary Harper on 774 ABC Melbourne. 23 minutes past 7 o'clock. News is coming up at a quarter to 8. Now, the lack of rain has hit farmers in the west of our state pretty badly and some are having to put their cattle on the road. They're going droving. And if you're Peter Bland, adventurer and leadership educator, you think, why don't we turn this into a teaching opportunity for teenagers and their parents? Peter, good morning. Morning, Hilary. How are you? I'm well, but I'm a little disturbed at the idea of taking a bunch of teenagers on the road with cattle some with no horse riding experience. What's behind this? Yeah, all the better. You know, I've found through 20 years of teaching that if a person is comfortable, it's it's difficult to shift them. So let's make them uncomfortable first, then let's shift them, and let's transform them into who the best version they can be. Do you need to take them by degrees, though, out of their comfort zone or sure. rather than plonk them? Well, you do definitely want to have this uh, perception that it's high risk and it's incredibly awkward. But the trick as a leadership educator is to make sure, in fact, the whole way there was a com- there was a level of comfort or cloud around them that kept them secure. So you, you support them within that uh, exactly. destab- destabilising yeah. experience. I mean, I wouldn't go and <clears throat> put some city kid on a on a on a brumby that hadn't been you know well educated. But you know, my horses are absolutely unbelievable. You could ride them bareback backwards with a with a rope. So you get chafing, but you're not going to get thrown That's off. That's right. I'd rather you get chafing than get thrown off. <laughs> that is an important part of leadership education. But what are you hoping that the kids are going to uh, get out of this? How will they be transformed? Yeah, well, the possibility that I'm creating for others is the power of others. Okay, there's two issues at play here. A, as you just said, we are in the worst drought that we've ever experienced on record from the Bureau of Meteorology. We had two inches of rain last week. It was too late and the crops won't, won't germinate. And the second issue at hand is that there's a real concern amongst parents that they're, they're disconnection between teenagers. Now, here we are in a society now, four billion years of evolution, and we are the only culture now that doesn't have a mainstream rite of passage program in place, whereas every Indigenous society since time eternal has. And in that rite of passage, it's a place where a young man or woman can make a stand for who they are. They can give their word, and then they can be that word. But here in this industrialised world that we live in, we might have a prom or an 18th birthday party or so forth, but do you actually get up there and make a statement about honouring and respect of the elders and equally the elders for the young? Well, I was going to say, you know, your first smartphone, uh, getting your first smartphone and your first Snapchat conversation seems to be what passes for that these days. It's sad, isn't it? So people are thinking they're more connected with 850 friends on Facebook, but really who's actually there for you to have a meaningful exchange? Well, and have you seen what happens to kids when you have to forcibly remove them from, you know, Wi-Fi? They're going to be out in the bush. Yeah, well, I look forward to others and parents witnessing me do that. <laughs> so what happens to kids? What do you see? I, I see them, okay, and I see their vulnerability and I see them step into a place of uncertainty because what happens if you have a bias in your life or a tendency, you'll find that what that's operating there is a certain level of certainty. And they're going to certainty because they know it. But that knowing that they know mightn't actually serve them. And it begs the question, if there's maybe 10% of the world's knowledge that a person knows they know or know they don't know, there's 90% of the world's knowledge they don't know they don't know. That's their blind spot. And I wish to expose parents and their children out in the bush to an area they don't even know they don't know, but when they see it, they will be so surprised by the majesty which lives inside all of us. Is this going to be as much of a shock for the parents, do you think, as the kids? I hope so. And where are you taking them? What's the the, uh, droving experience going to be like? So these cattle are pregnant and they're due to calve in uh, late July. Now, a a pregnant cow needs to develop the protein and fat within their body so they can produce the milk to the calf. So what we're going up there as a community is we're going up there to save the cycle of farming. So if these farmers just drop these cattle in the market right now, that's a whole generation gone. We're going up there driving cattle from Jinjilic up towards Tumbarumba, Can Coben. I mean, this is man from Snowbird Country. It makes my heart sing just saying those names. Well, and you're wearing a puffer jacket, so you're <laughs> fine. It's freezing up there. Oh, uh, well, don't worry. I've been doing this for a while. We've got incredible tents. Sleep. I mean, the tents we'll be using are the ones I used last year in Antarctica. Uh, so they're good. <laughs> it's all there. The horses are good. We're going up, as I said, Jinjilic, uh, Tumbarumba, Can Coben, all that whole area. And uh, how long are they going to be out of out of touch for? Yeah, I, I would recommend, I mean, people are welcome to come for a day uh, or for two weeks or three weeks, whatever they like. I would recommend three, three days because within those three days, you get a certain level of uncomfortableness. 
and I, we've got to get you a little bit dirty, you know, a little bit sweaty, a little bit like, oh, dad, mum, you know, the, the truck's flat or whatever. They've got to go through that to discover themselves. It's a process where they actually get a mutual respect and integrity reinstalled in the family unit. Well, you've got to get to know your horse. As well as well as well as that, yeah. And the, and, the, and the horse leadership that I'll be teaching will be largely initially on the ground because a person needs to know how to move a horse on the ground before they hop on them. Yes, that would be useful, and yeah. the horse has got to agree to all that. Yeah, and that's a whole respect going on. So I teach people about horse energy and equine energy, and that absolutely has to be mutual. Otherwise, it's, it's power over as, a, as opposed to power with. Do you see the distinction? Well, I do, and I, I, find, I think that'll be a really interesting thing for an adolescent because they're moving from a period of life where they have very little power yeah. into a period of life where they're starting to discover their power over various others yeah. and how to use that. And I think it's such a, a key moment in the formation of someone's identity, isn't it, when they start to work out their power but how they feel responsible using Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well said. And, and, and I think it's, it, it's actually a gift to them to have a point where it's recognised, hey, guys, we know you've been through this phase now and now you're in this phase. And if you look at a young man, you're going from a, a young boy, it's about me, me, me. It's about mummy, help me, um, I will live forever. Yeah, these are all thoughts of a child. But as a rite of passage, you transit to a place where a young man or woman comes out saying, okay, I'm part of the universe and I play a role with that. The power that I have is not for self but for others. Uh, and I won't live forever and I need to really contemplate the contribution that I'll make to this level of humanity at this stage of my life. So that's the transition we're making. The other key question is uh, you're providing horses, saddles, swags and meals for yep. however long the people yep. are going to be there. How much is this going to cost to learn well, to be yourself? It's free for the child. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that, that's a whole, the, if I get one message to the universe that I stand for, I stand for the power of paying it forward and the power of others, P.O., yeah? Power of others. Now, when we get that in our mind, wow, you can, a, a parent or a, a person who cares in your community can say, you know what, I want to pay for a young blah, blah, to do this. And they can come up there and, yeah, as I said, everything's provided. And if you bring a person younger than you, they're free. But how much do you pay? 900 a day. Okay, and that's for everything all inclusive and the, the safety bubble. Everything. $5,000 horses, $20,000 horse trucks, half a million dollars with the cattle, all provided. Just rock up there yeah. with, your, with your boots and a pair of jeans and a rain jacket. Think of it as free smells and, <laughs> and interaction with half a million head of cattle. And memories that will live with you forever and a mutual respect that will carry you as a family for your generation. And how do people get in touch with you, Peter? Just go to look up my name um, uh, and the word leadership, or actually my, my website is uh, www.leadershipgroup.com.au, www.leadershipgroup.com.au. And that's Peter Bland. And uh, when is this set for, June, July? Yeah, well, I, I run... I mean, if a person rang me today, they could come riding with me this afternoon at Mount Masson. The actual going droving is from the school holidays, so that's the 18th of June to the 12th of July. But if people want to get prepared, they can literally send me an email through my website today and I'll take them right in next week. Fascinating stuff. We might have to touch base with you afterwards <laughs> to find out how it went. Thank Peter you. Bland, uh, adventurer, founder of Leadership Group and Leadership Educator and uh, that droving experience with teenagers and parents or carers happening in the June-July school holidays. It's 28 minutes to 8 o'clock on 774 ABC Melbourne.